When John Fox compiled his book entitled The Acts and Monuments, which would later become known as the Fox's Book of Martyrs, it was the first of its kind, a single volume with the sole purpose of bringing together the numerous accounts of Christians who gave their life because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Such a volume had never been compiled. Witnesses to Fox's endeavor testified that he persisted to maintain the highest standard of honesty in his findings and that he was a, quote, sincere seeker after truth, end quote. Although history, true historical events, cannot wash away truth, it can obscure it. Eyewitnesses pass away in death before their testimonies are ever recorded. Sometimes, when those accounts are penned, they are lost or destroyed by the elements of time. Such is the case with James Abes. There is very little available to the inquirer save John Fox's account, an account which compared to others is not much more than a footnote. We know nothing of his origin, the date of his birth, the role that he played in the Christian church or the Reformation as a whole. He's described as a young man with a zeal to share the story that the monarchy desperately longed to stamp out, the plain teaching of salvation by grace through faith alone. This teaching was considered heresy and punishable by death. And in 1555, the list was long and growing of those who were paying the ultimate price for their faith in Jesus alone. I'm Ronnie Brown, and this is Forgotten. Something that James Abes was doing, whether it was preaching or teaching or evangelizing, caught the attention of the authorities, and an order for his arrest was issued by the Bishop of Norwich. Abes wandered from place to place like a fugitive looking for a place to hide from apprehension among brethren. But somewhere among these so-called friends was a betrayer. Someone informed the authorities as to his whereabouts and James Abes was arrested. He was brought before the Bishop of Norwich, a man by the name of John Hopton. The Bishop was set on causing this young man to recant his beliefs. He went at young Abes with the most frightening of threats. The means of execution varied greatly in this time, from burning at the stake to being drawn and quartered, dismembered, and being beheaded, just to name a few. And no doubt, Bishop Hopton used these threats to their full extent. After the threats of brutal torture were seemingly ineffective, the bishop then began to lighten his tone. He spoke to James with fair speech, imploring the young man to be sensible and reasonable, minimizing the magnitude of a simple change of heart and salting his offer with the promise of money. And finally, the bishop got his way. The bold fugitive of faith, James Abes, recanted his belief. He was immediately freed, and carrying with him was the sum of 20 or 40 pence in his hand. As the young man began his journey home, a free man, all the reasoning and posturing of the bishop's arguments began to wear off. With every step, conviction of soul set in. The coins in his pocket ceased to be 20 or 40 pence, but felt heavy with the weight of 30 pieces of silver. The echo of his voice, stating the denial of what he knew to be truth, sounded more and more like the words of a disciple saying, I know not the man. In that moment, every bird sounded like a cock crowing, and he could sense the eyes of the Lord Jesus looking at him as the denier that he had become. In that moment, he realized the significance of what he had just done. And somewhere on that road, with his heart throbbing with anticipation, he did an about face and headed back to stand before the Bishop of Norwich. He knew what this would mean. The Bishop would not be happy with his sudden change of heart. But James could not take another step down the road of betrayal. Upon arriving, he 
threw the money down at the bishop's feet, reclaiming his conviction and repenting that he had ever yielded to their wicked persuasion. Although he was like Peter in his denial, he also mirrored his contrition and his later boldness. The bishop and his chaplains tried to win him over again to no avail. And in the end, his boldness was rewarded with a sentence to be burned at the stake. On August 2, 1555, James Abes was carried to Bury, England to suffer his execution. When he arrived, he was commanded to undress. James handed his clothes to the needy around him. Where he was going, he had a brand new robe waiting on him. As he was taken to the execution site, bound to the stake, and the wood prepared all around him, he consistently exhorted the spectators to steadfastly cling to the truth of God's Word and Christ as their only means of salvation, even if it means that they too would seal their testimony with their own blood. It was then that one of the sheriff's servants began to mock him and blaspheme, calling Abe's a heretic and a lunatic. James Abe's was positioned and secured among the wood then the flame was kindled. As the fire rose around Abe's, the sheriff's servant that had mocked him earlier began to act erratically, as if he himself were mad. He began to take off his clothes as James did earlier, while saying, quote, Thus did James Abe's, the true servant of God, who is saved, but I am damned. End quote. He repeated this phrase over and over again, growing more and more agitated until finally the sheriff had him secured, tied to the cart, and delivered to his master's home. Once home, still struck with madness, his master had him bound and kept in a dark room in hopes that he would regain his senses. But from within the room, one could hear the statement repeated over and over, quote, James Abes was a true servant of God who is saved, but I am damned, end quote. It was not six months later that this man was taken in death. James Abes was burned at the stake on that August day in 1555, joining in a long list of others who would meet the same fate for their stand on the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But these final moments in the life and death of Abes send a clear message to us, a message not only about the necessity of being faithful to Jesus no matter what, but also of the reality of our own frailty. There are pressures and distresses in life that can cause us to stumble and fall, to even deny the Lord that saved us. There are times when we, by our actions, deny the Lord as loudly as Peter or Abe's did. We all make regrettable decisions. But James Abe's shows us that it's never wrong to go back and make it right, to face our betrayal with honesty and repentance, to go back to the point of failure and retake our stand for Jesus, no matter what the cost. Because if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgotten is written and produced by me, Ronnie Brown. You can find out more about this show at ForgottenPodcast.com. I'm also on Facebook at Facebook.com slash ForgottenPodcast. And as always, thanks for listening.